Hello, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Jeannie Schultz, and I'm a host for the Northwest Veg Gresham Area Community Potluck, which is held at the Seventh-day Adventist Healing Hope Church at approximately 150th in Gleason. We have a presentation by Emily Cooper, owner and farmer of Full Cellar Farms located in Gresham, Oregon. And the topic today is on CSAs or Community Supported Agriculture. Our original program was canceled due to inclement weather in January. And so we hope that you enjoy and find this information helpful. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jeannie. Um, I'm really happy to be here talking about something that I really love, um, which is CSA or Community Supported Agriculture. Um, and my talk is simply exploring CSA, why community supported agriculture might be a good choice for you. Um, just to start a little bit about my background, um, I started farming in 2008. Um, I worked on a farm for four years out in Northeast Oregon. and um, it was a diverse vegetable farm. We grew vegetables for CSA, for farmer's market, restaurants, grocery stores. Um, and I learned a ton on that small farm. It was about two acres. And then I moved back to Portland and got a job at a much bigger farm, a 20 acre vegetable CSA called 47th Avenue Farm. Um, and I was the harvest manager there from the spring of 2012. Um, full-time for two years and then started to um, become part-time when I started my own farm. Um, my farm is called Full Cellar Farm. It's almost exclusively a CSA farm. Um, I started it in 2014 and um, I am farming currently at the Headwaters Incubator Program in Gresham. Um, it's just east of Gresham. The land is um, owned by the East Multnomah Soil and Water Conservation District. They lease land to farmers who have experience, but they don't have land um, to get a farm started. So um, that's been a really amazing opportunity. There are 14 farms out there currently. And um, I am, um, like I said, it, um, it, I, my farm is almost exclusively a CSA farm, so about 90% of my income comes from CSA. So I love CSA. Um, a lot of the reasons um, I'll get into later in my presentation, but I, um, I just really appreciate having a long-term face-to-face relationship with my customers. Um, it's really rewarding to know the people who are eating the food that I'm growing. Um, and I really love being able to trade recipe ideas and talk about preserving and just see how happy people are when they get their vegetables every week. Um, and I also really appreciate the feedback I get when some things maybe not as high quality as people expect. Other, you know, normally people send their vegetables off to the grocery store or wherever they go and they would never know if their, you know, cabbage was a little wilty or whatever. So I really appreciate that two way relationship. Um, and then also, I'll get into this a little bit more later, but um, being able to concentrate my marketing in the off season so that I don't have to think about selling um, it when I'm growing the food is, um, is an amazing um, stress relief <laughs> and also um, getting the money up front when I need it at the begin beginning of the season before I have things to sell, but it's also really helpful. So what is CSA? Um, CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture, and I'd just like to dig into each of those three words a little bit more. Um, community, um, to me, what that means is local people supporting local agriculture. So um, the photo that is on the slide is was taken at a potato digging party I had at my farm a couple years ago. Um, every year I open my farm up um, several times for work parties or farm tours and um, the potato dig um, we've done three years in a row now we bring potatoes in um, from the field we drop them in a pot of boiling water we have a potato topping bar um, so people come and they spend a few hours digging potatoes and helping me haul in 
a crop that would otherwise be very laborious for me to do by myself. And then they get to eat the freshest potatoes they've ever had. So that's an example of community. A lot of CSA farms do things like that, like work parties or tours. I've heard of um, CSA farms doing cooking classes or having food-related book groups, that kind of thing. But it, basically, it's a way to have a direct relationship between you, the eater, and your farmer. Um, supported uh, is, to me, investing in a farm when the farmer needs it most. Um, this time of year, there are a lot of supplies to buy. This is, I guess I should say, this is uh, February. Um, there are a lot of supplies to buy seeds and all kinds of things you need in the field, tea posts and all kinds of things. Um, but there aren't a lot of crops to sell, if any, for a lot of vegetable farmers. So selling um, shares of the CSA, um, the way a CSA works is usually members will buy a share at the beginning of the season and then they get their vegetables later on when they're, when they're ready to harvest. So people would buy a share in the winter or the early spring and then often we'll get vegetables in a weekly delivery through the summer and fall. Um, so that kind of investment in the farm is uh, really important to the farmer. Um, <clears throat> and being able to know, for me personally, when I start the main part of my growing season that most of the income half of my, of my budget is taken care of if I've sold all my shares, that's really, that's really amazing. Um, and from a customer's point of view, um, not having to go to the farmer's market through the season or to the grocery store, but knowing that yet that part of your shopping is taken care of is also, you know, kind of, it's kind of fun and it's also, it can be a convenience. Um, agriculture part of CSA, that's what everyone's here for. It's the, it's the food. Um, local, local, healthy and seasonal produce. Um, members get access to um, usually weekly boxes of vegetables um, and it's usually delivered to their home or office or a centralized pickup location. Um, boxes are filled with whatever is available from the farm that week. Um, farmers also, also in, um, frequently include things like storage tips or recipes to help people use their vegetables. Um, Typically, CSA farms don't provide choice, so it's not exactly like going to the grocery store and picking out specifically what you want for your recipes. Instead, they give you a weekly box of what looks good and is fresh from the farm that week. And so um, members get to learn to cook with what they get in their box. And um, a lot of people really like that about CSA. I've heard a lot of members say, oh, it's like Christmas every week because it's always a surprise box. Um, this slide shows um, nine photos of some of examples of some shares from my farm last year. And you can kind of see a seasonal progression from the top left down to the bottom right. Um, in the early spring, you, there are a lot of crops um, that typical, or not early spring, but early um, summer. Typical crops are springy things like uh, snap peas and carrots and um, garlic scapes, bok choy. Um, in the summer, you get more things like zucchini and tomatoes and peppers. And then um, in the winter, or not like the early winter, late fall, um, that's when you see a lot of garlic and potatoes and winter squash and cabbages and leeks and things like that. Um, so there are a lot of benefits to CSA. Um, one of them, the, the first one is personal health. Um, many members report that when they join a CSA, they eat more vegetables. Makes sense. I mean, you have them brought to you or boxed up for you every week. Um, and there are studies that have shown that people who, um, people who belong to CSA, they eat more vegetables and they eat a wider variety of vegetables. Um, another benefit of CSA is ecosystem health. Um, when you have a relationship with a farmer, you can find a farmer who um, has the kind of growing practices that you want to support. You can talk to them about certifications, if they're organic or if they're salmon safe. Um, and you're in a long-term relationship with that farmer, so you can help support ecosystem health um, through the choices that, the farm choice that you make. Another benefit of CSA is community health. Um, 
supporting local farms makes more healthy food for everyone in your community. Um, when the farmer is stronger, then the local food scene is stronger. Um, small farmers tend to buy their supplies from s other small businesses, um, so the money stays in the community more. Um, and when farmers have community support, they have more um, ability to share their food with other people in the community who are in need. Um, through maybe through CSA scholarships or um, donating to the food bank and that kind of thing. And then the last benefit that I see to CSA is health of the planet. <laughs> um, just our industrial food system um, gives us cheap food, but it's not, um, it has many hidden costs from environmental costs like soil, water, and air pollution to um, diet-related illnesses like diabetes and heart disease, um, ill treatment of animals. I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, the, a lot of the negative effects of um, industrial food systems. So joining a CSA lets you be part of a different kind of food system. And that is good for the health of the planet. <laughs> um, there are a few downsides to CSA. I'm not here to just tell you that it's all roses and nothing nothing hard about it. Um, one that, that can be a problem for some people is the price. Um, purchasing um, vegetables from local farms is um, typically more expensive than buying vegetables at a regular grocery store. Um, and it's also hard for some people because of that upfront purchase um, where you pay for it at the beginning of the season. Making a big purchase like that all at once can be, can be difficult for some people. Another downside of CSA is convenience. Um, with a few exceptions, CSAs usually do require that you pick up your share at a central location within a specific pickup window. So if, um, you know, if you don't make it to your neighbor's house on Wednesday between 5 and 7 p.m., then you're out of luck. Um, so that's not convenient for everyone. Um, kind of related to that, there's an inflexibility to it. Um, if you go on vacation, a lot of times you just lose your box. Um, uh, the goal is to support the farm. A lot of, you know, farmers don't, farms don't take vacations. Farmers might, but farms don't. Um, the vegetables don't go anywhere. Um, so if you go out of town, the vegetables are still there and you usually just lose your, lose your box that week. Um, and then another common downside of CSA is food waste, um, or lack of choice. They're kind of related because a lot of times when people feel that they don't have, the, they don't get the vegetables that they want either because they don't like them or they've gotten too many of them, um, that can lead to food waste. And in my experience and from talking to other farmers, that's probably the number one reason people who had a CSA and choose not to renew, that's the reason, is they feel guilty about food waste. So um, if you're interested in doing CSAs, then I would recommend doing research because they're actually um, a lot of farms out there that are starting to respond to some of these down traditional downsides of CSA. Um, many farms now allow payment plans um, so that you don't have to pay up front in one chunk. Um, many farms are also now taking payment by SNAP, um, food stamp program. Um, some farms offer opportunities to skip a box for a week and get a credit for, for, for a future box. Um, some farms, um, like mine, allow members to choose the produce that's in their box. So if you have someone in your house who just really hates fennel or someone who has an allergy to onions or if you like kale but you don't like it every week, um, you have an opportunity to adjust every week or to make a decision about what you get. Um, many farms now offer a variety of box sizes for different size households. Um, and then some even offer delivery straight to your home or your workplace. So there's a lot of um, different kinds of CSAs out there and asking questions about how they operate well, it would help you find one that's a good fit for you. Um, I also just want to say a quick word about a really cool program we have 
here in the in the Portland area, that's related to the price, um, helping people afford the cost of this ESA. Um, Double Up Food Bucks is in its second year here in Portland, um, and this year it's actually expanding to farms um, elsewhere in Oregon. But um, it helps people from, who receive um, SNAP benefits um, afford a CSA share by offering um, a dollar for dollar match up to $200 towards the cost of a CSA share. Um, that's funded by the Farmers Market Fund with um, money from pri private donors and also a grant from USD USDA's Food Insecurity Nutrition Incentive Program. Um, so that's a really cool program and hopefully it will continue and expand in the future. So there are several websites you can use to find a CSA farm that's a good fit for you. Um, one of them is called uh, Portland CSA, Portland Area CSA Coalition. It's portlandcsa.org is the website. Um, and that allows you to choose um, or to search by um, broad pickup areas. So neighborhoods in Portland um, or cities outside of Portland. So for example, you could search um, for Gresham um, and it would pull up all the farms that have pickup areas, picket sites in Gresham. Um, and then it also gives some highlights about the farm operation, um, their growing practices, what kind of shares they offer, um, when they're, um, what types of, of foods they offer, and um, gives contact information for those farms. Another one that's interesting, it allows you to search by pickup area, is um, the Portland City, City of Portland has a, an interactive CSA website, um, or interactive CSA map um, that will allows you to look for pickup sites um, that are in your neighborhood or the area where you work, um, and it has very specific locations that were that were um, reported to them by the CSA farms. So you can go to the map and just zoom in on it and find the exact farms and the exact pickup sites. Um, unfortunately, it's only for the city of Portland, so um, no no cities outside of Portland, but it does go all the way out to the very edges of the city of Portland. Um, and you can find that interactive map um, at portlandoregon.gov slash BPS, um, and then click on sustainability. Another website that is a national website, but it has quite a few listings for farms in Oregon is called Local Harvest, and that's at localharvest.org. Um, they have listings for farms that sell produce all different ways, um, through farmer's markets, farm stands, even online. Um, but they do have a lot of listings for CSA farms as well. A really fun way to find your farmer is um, actually an event that happens once a year. Um, Portland Area CSA Coalition puts it on. It's called um, the CSA Share Fair. And that is um, a place where dozens of CSA farms come and set up booths and um, people can come and actually shop for their CSA by meeting farmers face to face and asking them whatever questions are important to them. Um, and that is happening this year on March 11th, that's 2017, and it is um, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the site of the Hollywood Farmers Market. Um, so that's a really fun event. There's a lot of um, opportunity to meet other members and to talk to tons of farmers. There's a matchmaking booth that helps you narrow down your options um, based on certain criteria like um, what neighborhood you want to pick up in or what kind of share you're looking for or if you want to pay with SNAP, um, that kind of thing. So it helps make the whole thing a little bit less overwhelming. Um, but it's a great place to talk to a lot of farmers. And there's also a lot of times um, in the past we've had a lot of um, other fun events like uh, cooking demos, a cookbook swap, and some kids' activities. So it's it's fun. It's a good place to go. And then a couple other ways to find a CSA farm that's a good fit for you. Um, one is just word of mouth, talking to friends, coworkers, neighbors, asking if they have a CSA farm that they like, um, or asking them to share their experiences with it. Um, you can even, if you have multiple people at your work location or in your neighborhood, you could try talking to a farmer and having them set up a drop site um, at your work or in your neighborhood if there isn't one there already. Um, and then talking directly to farmers. Um, once you've identified a few farms that seem interesting to you, get in touch with those farmers. That's that's part of the, the um, 
the direct relationship um, that CSA is great for. So talking to farmers about their growing practices, about their um, share sizes, um, about other things about their CSA farm, is um, it's, it's great. It's a great way to um, exercise the relationship that CSA is so known for. And there are over 50 CSA farms in the Portland area, so we have a lot to choose from, but we're really lucky for that. If you have any questions, um, you can always um, look up Portland Area CSA Coalition. I mentioned them earlier. Um, their website is portlandcsa.org. And they're a volunteer-run um, 501c3 nonprofit. They, um, they exist to help um, promote CSA in the Portland area and to try to make good matches between farmers and eaters. So they're a really great resource. And you're also always welcome to contact me. Um, again, my name is Emily Cooper, and my farm is Full Cellar Farm. And you can find me on the web at fullcellarfarmoregon.com. Thanks.